Let's do a quick demo so you can see how easy it is to get a motor spinning with the GS4 drive. I'm using this drive with single phase 230 volt power so we just wire the two power leads to any of the three phase terminals and put the ground here. Then we just wire the three drive output terminals to the three phases of the motor. Now we need to tell the drive what motor we just connected and how we want it to act. To do that we could press the menu button and go into the parameters menu and go hunt for all the parameters we need to get the motor turning. But with over 500 parameters that's a bit overwhelming until you're familiar with how the parameters are organized and used. The good news is there's a quick start menu. With a basic menu that's already collected the minimum set of parameters you need to get going in one place. And while there are 19 parameters in this basic menu, if you just want to get the motor spinning quickly, the defaults are fine for most applications. So really, there's only a couple you actually need to change to get that motor running. Before we try it though, look at this. In the basic menu, if you back up one to the 19th parameter and hit enter, it takes you right to the factory reset parameter. Let's reset this drive to 60 Hz factory default. So if you're following along, we'll both be starting from the exact same place. Great. Let's see if we can get this motor spinning by changing just a couple parameters. Quick start parameter 1 is the motor's max voltage, which the motor label says is 230 volts, which is the default value, so no change there. Quick start parameter number 2 is the full load amperage, which the motor nameplate says is 3.2 amps. So we'll change that and hit enter. Quick start parameter 3 is the motor's base frequency, the default's fine. Quick start parameter 4 is the motor's max RPM which the nameplate says is 1725, so the default of 1710 is close enough for now. Quick start parameter number 5 is the motor's max frequency, which we'll leave at the default 60 Hz. Quick start parameter 6 is the horsepower, which you would normally change, but we're using a 1 horsepower motor in this demo, so the default happens to be correct. Well, for the rest of this, the defaults are fine for now, so we're ready to go, but don't hit the run button just yet. There's one thing you need to be aware of. It's rare here in the US, but if you have an ungrounded or an unbalanced power supply system, it's really important that you make sure the drive's RFI jumper is removed. Variable frequency drives can put a lot of noise back on system power lines, so there's an RFI filter built into the drive to prevent that. But if you have an ungrounded or unbalanced power supply, the RFI filter may become a path to ground, which could burn up that circuitry. You might hear a pop or even see or smell a little smoke. The drive will still run, it'll just put more noise back on the power lines than normal because the RFI filter is blown. I'm using a 230 volt AC system with proper grounding, and hopefully you are too, so we can leave that RFI jumper in. If we hit the run button, the motor starts to turn, exactly what we wanted. And all we had to do was tell the drive a little bit about the motor that we connected it to. Click here to learn more about the GS4 family of variable frequency drives. Click here to learn more about Automation Direct's free support options and click here to subscribe to Automation Direct's YouTube channel so you'll be notified when we publish new videos.